on this episode of Modern Greaser. Hey, sun's out, guns out. What's that? Sun's, sun's out, guns out. Sun's out, guns out. Oh yeah, yeah my bad. Thanks, buddy. That's better. All right, on this episode of Modern Greaser, you're gonna see something that is all American. It is all freaking American. That's what I'm talking about. In order to make this episode awesome, I'm gonna do a sweet jump in front of this Hummer. I made this ramp all by myself. That, that, that's the wrong way. This is my 1954 Schwinn. We're gonna give it a whirl and see what happens. We're not looking at a Hummer. This is a Humvee. And it's about as American as you can get. The true name of the vehicle we're looking at is the HMMWV, or High Mobility Multi-Purpose Wheeled Vehicle. Its colloquial name is Humvee, which is easier to say and it's just a nickname. This Humvee is produced by AM General. AM General traces its roots to the Kaiser Willy Motor Company, the original creator of the infamous Jeep used in World War II. Eventually, AMC purchased the Jeep Corporation from Kaiser in 1970 and renamed its military division the AM General Corporation. So this is a 1987 Humvee. They were prototyped in 1983, made by AM General. So this Humvee has a turbo 400 transmission and they originally came with a 6.2 diesel but this one has a 6.5 liter swapped into it. Okay so one thing about this Humvee is that there's a particular order that things work on it and you can't be a dum-dum about it. So in order to get the hood open you have to pull these pins and then this doodad folds down here and then you got to go on this side to open it up because that's where the push pin is. I am the Oi Karate! That's fiberglass, but it still weighs a good chunk. In 1992, AM General began marketing the Humvees to civilian use under the Hummer brand. In 1999, they finally sold the rights to the Hummer brand to GM. Titling a prior used military Humvee can get extremely complicated and can vary from state to state. Transitioning this vehicle from military to civilian use can be a timely process, but will be well worth it in the end if you have the stamina. So what's great about this Humvee is that where my feet are sitting on the floor is where all the important components of the vehicle stops. Right here next to me in the large hump that you'll see is where all the transfer case and the transmission, the drive shaft and all that wonderful stuff is kept safe and out of the way, the engine and all that. And right underneath where the bottom of the vehicle is, that's where everything stops. And for good reason, because if you're driving over military things, however they do that, in very manly ways, then you gotta have that clearance, Clarence. That's why I did the jump on my bike. To show you, it's kind of the same thing, I think. The Humvee body is constructed from lightweight and rust-resistant aluminum instead of steel. Weighing in at 7,700 pounds, gross vehicle weight, this Humvee was originally sent to the U.S. Army. However, this Humvee has gone under a paint job, and when they were sanding the hood down, it actually said the U.S. Marine Corps on the hood. So they're not really sure, the owner's not really sure if they uh, kind of swapped out some parts or if both branches of the military owned it. Either way, it makes this Humvee that much cooler. The first military operation the Humvees saw combat in was the operation of Just Cause with the invasion of Panama in 1989. The HMMWV was designated primarily for personal and light cargo transport behind front lines. Like the Jeep prior, the basic Humvee was not armored and did not protect against small arm fire, let alone machine guns. Later on, Humvees would begin receiving more and more armor as time went on. The HMMWV has become the vehicular backbone of the U.S. forces around the world. Over 10,000 HMMWVs were employed by coalition forces during the Iraq War. So what's really neat is that these military vehicles have all these stealth capabilities. 
Like if you have to get away from the bad guys. Believe it or not, Humvees are 24 volt systems, making them compatible with most of the military vehicles in service. The military is trying to standardize on equipment for ease of fueling and maintenance issues like jump starting and battery charging. So the best thing about this <laughs> the best thing about this Humvee is that it's not 12 volts, it's 24 volts. If you need to get to the batteries, it's just as easy as taking the seat out. I don't even know what to do with this thing. One suggested future role for the Humvee is an autonomous unmanned ground vehicle, a UGV. If converted to a UGV, the vehicle could serve as a mobile scout vehicle with armored features removed to enhance mobility and terrain accessibility. Autonomous features would allow the Humvees to drive themselves and one soldier to control a swarm of several vehicles. As you can see, underneath the Humvee, it's all at the same height as the floorboards. This is a drive shaft. Oh, this is an American episode. That is the drive shaft, you see, and it goes here to the brakes on this side, and then the axle shafts come out over here to this end, and then the coil springs and the shocks. And it's a full independent setup. That would be the gas tank over there, the exhaust pipe and the muffler, and blinker fluid goes in over there. The Humvee has a full independent suspension with helical gear reduction hubs, which allows the drivetrain to be a full 16 inches off the ground. The Humvee also has a double wishbone suspension with portal gear hubs and inboard disc brakes. Humvees are well suited for air mobile operations as they can be transported by C-130s and are droppable by parachute or can be sling loaded by helicopters. There are many armored and specialized variations of the Humvee. Variations can range from air defense missiles, ambulances, ones with gun turrets. If you can think it up, the military has probably already specialized it. The Humvee replacement process is being undertaken by the U.S. military, forced on interim replacement with MRAPs and long-term replacement with the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle. The HMMWV has evolved several times since its introduction and was used in tactical roles for which it was never originally intended. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is how the military does it. They're like, pick a boo! Raising the drivetrain into the cabin area and lowering the seats in the frame creates a massive chest-high transmission hump which separates passengers on each side and lowers the overall center of gravity compared to most trucks where the body and passengers are above the frame. Newer Humvee versions can be equipped with an optional central tire inflation system. There are at least 17 variants of the HMMWV in service with the US military. The opportunity for civilians to operate former military vehicles is a privilege. These vehicles are rugged and are built to last. The Humvee is a legendary vehicle and has served so many purposes that it will also go down in history the same way the Jeep did after World War II. As you look at the seats of this vehicle, remember that many brave men and women have spent countless hours riding here, and many of them have lost their lives here. Hours behind the wheel and countless memories have been forged in the minds of our veterans. After World War II, my grandfather bought a Jeep after returning from the war. I'm glad our veterans have the same opportunity to do the same with the Humvee. I don't claim to know anything about this vehicle, but I sure as hell respect it. And I also respect the men and women who have spent countless hours in one of these. They have been bravely serving in our armed forces, maintaining our freedom, and keeping our privileges that we have here in America. So thank you to all the veterans out there, and we appreciate you sharing this vehicle that you have spent so much of your time in. A special thanks goes out to that Humvee guy. Be sure to check him out on Instagram. And thank you for joining us on yet again another episode of Modern Greaser. Make sure you click that like button if you like this video. Make sure you click that like button if you hate this video. And be sure to subscribe. Would you like to say anything to the Modern Greaser YouTube channel viewers? Uh, of stay three? greasy, guys. Stay, stay, gre greasy. stay greasy. Stay greasy. Stay greasy. Stay greasy.
see, and it goes here to the brakes on this side, and then the axle shafts come on. Pipe and the muffler. Huh. Linker fluid goes in over there. 